Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, I hope you guys are doing great and I hope you guys are doing well from all over the world where you are watching this video from. And today, we are speaking on the fact that Christians claim that they have the Holy Spirit and in them having the Holy Spirit, they are then able to interpret scripture, they are then able to see what scripture says and interpret it according to what scripture says. But according to Sheikh and Dr. Ahmed Didat, Christians continue to really really misunderstand they continue to not understand what scripture says but see the opposite as to what scripture says what are the verses what are the scriptures in which Christians do misunderstand and understand the opposite we are about to find out today but before we get started please do me a favor drop a like on the video subscribe if you are new hit the bell notification as well so that every time we post a new video you get to see it first as the video is continuing please drop a comment and tell us how Christians can really really start to understand the scripture that they read in the Holy Bible but without further ado let's go and let's get it I understand from other teachings that I've heard about Islam that most of the Islam people would agree with certain things in the Bible they would agree with what is in the Quran. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, in the Christian teaching it says that Jesus, according to the Gospels, as, as you've already talked about, did in fact die on the cross and was the payment for all of our sins, which through him is the way for us to be able to have his righteousness and therefore be perfect in God's sight. I was curious as to the view in the Quran as to the crucifixion, if indeed it did or did not happen. Thank you. With regards to the crucifixion, the Quran is very explicit. Very explicit. It says, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That they said in boast that we kill Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the apostle of God. In answer to that, God says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ That they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. I have a question, you guys. I have a question to all Muslims. All Muslims watching this video right now. Please tell me in the comments. Don't you guys have a distinction between a prophet, the word prophet, and the word apostle? Because I have been taught and I have studied and seen that the name apostle and the name prophet mean totally different things those are two different offices the office of an apostle and the office of a prophet are quite different from each other so i want you guys to tell me in islam do you guys consider apostle and prophet as the same thing because as i've said in previous videos there's quran versions that i've read that says that the prophet sallallahu wasallam is an apostle of god as Sheikh and Dr. Ahmedita right now is saying that Jesus is an apostle of God. But now what happens as to come to the, the, the point of them being prophets? Because other versions say they are prophets. So I want us to talk about that for a bit. Do you guys think there's a distinction between apostle and prophet? And if there's no distinction, tell me what you think about there being no distinction. Why is there no distinction between a prophet as well as an apostle? But let's continue. But it was made to appear to them so. And those who dispute therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge. They only follow conjecture, guesswork. For a surety, they killed him not. That's the Muslim position. We say, Amanna Sadakna. We hear and we affirm. But now, my sister says, look, we have a record. The Christian says, we have a written record. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. These 27 books of the New Testament. And we have hundreds of prophecies fulfilling this event. My response is, I said, look, my brothers and sisters, you are reading this book, the Bible, in your own mother tongue. And I'm claiming that you are understanding the exact opposite of what you're reading. Not just misunderstanding. We can have a lot of misunderstanding. But exact opposite. If you read in the Bible, for example, that thou shalt not commit adultery, you are understanding that thou shalt commit adultery. So how can we be such zombies? What do you take us for? You know, we are the people who are on the moon. 
You know, we got the whole world in, a, in the palm of our hand. You have the Bay of Bengal tragedy. See, America warned Pakistan. They said, look, the tidal waves are coming. Be on guard. They didn't hit the warning, the fools, my people. They didn't hit the warning. And hundreds of thousands more people died. They warned the Jews in 1973 that the Arabs are on the move. They didn't hit the warning. So we know the Arabs. Every time they want to do anything, they make a big noise beforehand. So when you will do this and we'll do that, and by then he said, we'll give it to them. So they didn't hit the warning. First time the Arabs caught the Jews off guard. They broke the parallel line. First time they took the initiative because they didn't hit the American warning. You got the whole world in the palm of your hand. And yet this same nation, he's reading the book in his own mother tongue and he's understanding the exact opposite of what you're reading. This is not just a charge, an allegation. I prove it to you in two minutes. I said, you know, Jesus returned to that upper room after his alleged crucifixion where they had the last supper. Those of you who know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. He goes in and he wishes his disciples in the Hebrew language, Shalom Aleichum, which means same as Salam Aleichum in Arabic, peace be unto you. And when he said peace be unto you, his disciples were terrified. So I'm asking why were they terrified? Because when you meet your long lost master, your uncle, your grandfather, the Arab and the Jew, we embrace one another, we kiss one another. I felt very funny the first time the Arabs did it to me. But I'm getting used to it now. You see, I said, that's what the Jews did 2,000 years ago and the Arabs did 2,000 years ago. Instead of doing that, they're terrified. I said, why were they terrified? So the man knows his Bible. He said, look, Luke chapter 24, verse 36, he tells us that they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. Is that the answer? Yes, that's what the Bible says. Luke says, they thought he was a spirit. So I said, did he look like a spirit? And by now, for 40 years I'm talking, not one Christian has ever told me yes. If he did, if you do, I said, what does a spirit look like? If he says he looked like a spirit, I said, what does a spirit look like? Tell me now. No. Everybody says no. He didn't. So I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? Puzzled. Puzzled. So I said, you see, the reason is that the disciples of Jesus, they had heard from hearsay people talking that the master was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay people were talking that he had given up the ghost. You know, the spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay that now he's dead and buried for three days. All the knowledge was from hearsay, people talking. Because they were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses to the happening. Because Mark chapter 14, verse 50, he tells us that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All. I said, does all mean all in your language, you Englishman? He said, yes. That they were not there. All the knowledge was from hearsay. On hearsay knowledge, if you heard about a man, your master, who was dead and buried for three days, you expect him to be stinking in his grave. Such a person, when you see, naturally you are terrified. You think he is a ghost, a spook, spirit. So Jesus wants to assure them that they are not what they are thinking. So he says, Unzuru ila yadaya wa He says, Behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa, that it is I myself. Husuni wanzuru. He says, Handle me and see. Fa inna ruha laysa lahu lahmu wizamun. For a spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. Handle me and see. A spirit, a spirit has no flesh and bones. A spirit, I mean any spirit, is an indefinite article. In your language, any spirit. And this is an axiomatic truth. You don't have to prove it to the atheist, the agnostic, the Hindu, the Jew, the Muslim. Universally, we say spirit has no flesh and bones. If you get, got flesh and bones, you're not a spirit. No convincing required. Why does he go out of his way to tell them so? Because they're thinking that he is. So he said, the spirit has no flesh and bones as you see me have. And they felt him. And they believed not for joy, meaning that they were overjoyed and wondered, what happened, man? We thought the man was dead and buried. To assure them further that they are wrong in their understanding, he said, Aindakum hahuna ta'am. Have you got here anything to eat? Fanawaluhu juz'am min samakin wa shay'in min shahadi asalin fa akhaza wa akala kuddamahum. And they... I have something to say about that. You guys realize that in the lifetime of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, everything he consumed as food, everything he ate, everything he drank was halal. I don't know if you guys see that. I don't know if you guys realize that. But everything he ate and drank was halal. I just want to pose a question to Christians and everybody else watching this video. What are we eating today? The things that, are, that we are eating, 
would Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, be proud to say he has set a good example as far as the things you are eating and the things you are drinking? Because I can say right now, many of us are not eating things that are halal. Jesus Christ is eating things that are halal and I think it's time if we are believers to reconstruct our diet as to what is halal and what is not halal as far as what we put in our bodies. But let's continue. Gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and he ate in the very sight to prove what? That is a ghost, that is spook, his spirit, he's resurrected. No. And the same fellow man, damn fools, what are you afraid of me for? Handle me and see. And look at the post-crucifixion events. He's ever in disguise, ever in disguise. His own disciples can't recognize him on the way to Emmaus. Ever in disguise, he never went to the temple of Jerusalem. He never went and showed them, he said, look, here I am. He gave a sign to the Jews, the sign of Jonah, that I will be like Jonah, and I'm reasoning with the people. What was the sign of Jonah? Look, it's another topic. I dealt with it last night with Professor Douglas. Get the videotape and I deal with this more extensively. Or get this book absolutely free. Crucifixion or crucifixion. Sounds the same, but it is not. Have a look. Crucifixion, the first fiction is F-I-X-I-O-N. To fix up a person on the cross and kill him. That's crucifixion. The second is cruci, F-I-C-T-I-O-N, fiction. Means a fairy tale. And the Quran says, Illa tiba zan, the only following conjecture, guesswork, fiction. And I prove it to you from the Bible. I give 30 different reasons from the Bible that Jesus Christ was neither killed nor crucified. You must be big enough. Men enough to read it, women enough to read it, and then come back to me. And I tell you in your own language, as if somebody has made zombies out of you. You read something, and you're understanding something else. You read there again and again. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. It says, and he gave many convincing proofs, Jesus, many convincing proofs that he was alive. A-L-I-V-E, alive. That's the word there. He was alive. Mary Magdalene, after her experience with Jesus, she returns and tells the others that he is alive. A-L-I-V, alive, and they believe not. The two from Emmaus return to that upper room, telling the others that he is alive, and they believe not. These eight or ten, telling Thomas he wasn't there at the first meeting, he said, look, Jesus is alive, and he believed not. By God, I don't know what you're reading. In English, A-L-I-V-E, alive, A-L-I-V-E, alive, not resurrect, not resurrected, not res alive, 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 alive. And you say, resurrected, resurrected, resurrected. You concoct a word which is not there, and then you thumbsuck it. And then you want the whole world to thumbsuck it as well. I said, there's something wrong. Somebody has made zombies out of you in your own mother tongue. Come, talk to me. Bring your, 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 your Jerry Falwells and your Pat Robertsons. And uh, who else is there? Billy Graham and uh, Jimmy Swaggart. Bring them. Arrange four meetings in the United States on topics like, is the Bible God's word? Was Christ crucified? Is Jesus God? And I am prepared to pay any one of these $10,000 per performance. Just one hour. In Madison Square Garden, I give you $10,000. And I will organize the meeting. We need four meetings like that in the United States. Let the country know, these 240 million people, that look, you are being led by the nose by somebody. And that somebody is not God. And because of their saying and boast, we killed the Messiah, which is Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. This is a scripture in the Holy Quran. I've read the scripture, think on two previous videos that we have done. But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but it was only made to appear so. I wish Christians can hear this or read this part of the Quran. And those who differ therein are full of doubts. I wish you guys can read this. They have no certain knowledge. They follow nothing but conjecture, for surely they killed him not. How do we know that they killed him not? We just read various scriptures in the Holy Bible which suggests that he was alive. Nobody said he was resurrected. All of them kept on saying he is alive. This is the glorious Quran rather. Nobody said that he was resurrected. Everybody was saying that he is alive. Let me make you another example. Thomas came to the disciples and found out later, after they had found out that the man is alive. And they came to him with the same news to say that, hey man, the
the person we thought was dead is actually alive. He was never crucified. That is why Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, made it a point that he comes also to Thomas to show him the same thing that he showed to the other disciples in the first meeting to say, I am still alive. Same thing as Jonah, same thing with me as he told the Jews, as he told everybody else that same thing with Jonah is the same thing as me. People will perceive to think that I'm dead, but I'm actually alive. This thing then therefore progresses to us having after Mark, Matthew, Luke and John, we now have the Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles is now based on the disciples of the Apostles after they have seen that the person is not dead but actually now taken up by the Holy Spirit, taken up into heaven by the Holy Spirit after he has shown us that he was not dead but he was alive. That's why after all of these happenings we have the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the Disciples whom were told, who were given an assignment before the departure of Jesus to say that you must go and teach people about the kingdom of God. You must go and teach people about all of the things you have seen, all of the things that I have taught you. And that's exactly why we have the book of Acts after all of the happenings that took place after Jesus Christ. But what do you think causes Christians not to understand the Holy Bible? After they read scriptures, what causes them not to understand? Is it the lack of the Holy Spirit as they believe they have it? Or what is it? What is it? What causes them not to understand everything that they read in the Holy Bible? Drop a comment and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell notification. Don't forget to like the video if you have not yet done so. And we meet again next time on the next reaction video. Much love. Peace.